it's pretty easy to save seed but if you want to save seed for squashes um, what you need to do is make sure they don't cross pollinate most squashes will easily cross pollinate um, I'm going to show you guys how to how to save seed for a butternut squash I have different varieties here from zucchinis to butternut I have some pumpkins I just want to avoid the chance of them crossing and then getting some strange looking fruit the next year so by trying to protect the flowers to avoid cross-pollination across plants you can ensure that you that, that the fruit will stay true to the plant year after year so what you need to do um, you know the main concept is to identify identify flowers that are about to open or that will open the next morning and then protect them prevent them from opening so that bees and other pollinators can get to them then manually pollinate the flowers the female flower with the male flower and then continue to protect the flower until uh, the pollination is successful and the fruit starts setting so if you look this flower right here this is a female flower is actually about to open so uh, I can show you this one opened today this morning so you can tell by how it's spent it looks like it opened and it's kind of wilty this one is still very stiff so what that means is that this is going to open first thing in the morning another thing that you want to make sure of is uh, that you also have a male flower that is ready to open the next morning because what can happen is if you have a, a male flower that has already opened the day before it's possible that that male flower could have been contaminated with pollen from a different plant by one by a bee so if you can see right here this flower this flower looks just like the female flower ready to open this is another spent male flower but this one is going to open first thing in the morning use clothes pin and just apply it to the very tip just like this and try to do it in a way that you're not damaging the flower too much trying to be delicate you know all you're trying to do is prevent it from opening all I'm doing I'm taking a clothespin applying it to the tip just very gentle just the tip hurt the flower too much because um, I want the petals to stay as whole as possible because after I pollinate these in the morning I'm gonna have to apply it again and it has to stay closed for another couple of days to ensure that it pollinated and that no other bees can no bees can get into it so that's it for now we'll be back in the morning as you can see this is the male flower and if I release release the flower, this should be, the flower should be pretty ready to open. So if you look at that, I kind of nudged it a little bit and just popped it open. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the flower completely off with pruners. That way I can basically use this as a paintbrush. Now I didn't mention this uh, yesterday, but uh, I assume that you all know how to tell the difference between male flowers and female flowers. The male flowers will just have a stem like this, while the female flower look like this. It'll have a small version of the fruit attached to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna I'm basically I'm gonna take the petals off. This is the male stamen, and it has all the pollen on it. It's full of pollen. So now we'll release this, and I'm not going to damage the petals because, again, I want to close this back up when I'm done. So I don't know if you can see the inside, but 
looks different. All I do is I'm going to take this, just like a paintbrush, and I'm going to gently rub this pollen all over. Try to get it pretty much uh, everywhere. Oops, I kind of ripped up flowers. If you're doing multiple flowers, then you can use the same stamen for all the flowers, because there's plenty of pollen on this one. And then I'll take this. Now again, this um, this is only going to remain closed maybe another day or two, just to ensure. So this time I'm uh, I'm clipping it a little closer or a little yeah a little tighter, just because I ripped the the flower a little bit. But I think it's pretty sturdy. It should uh, it should survive. It should make it for two days easily. That's what it looks like when you're done. Yeah, in two days I will just remove the clothespin and uh, we should start seeing the fruit and getting larger. And that's the indication that the the fruit, uh, the female flower was properly pollinated. Pick this zucchini right here before it turns into a baseball bat. This is day two. And uh, as you can see, I don't know if you can or cannot see, maybe if I put my hands next to it, but. Flower's done. And the butternut squash has actually started to grow. It looks visibly bigger. Um, not a lot bigger, but I would say it's at least twice the size, maybe one and a half times. Okay, and all I'm gonna do now is tie it. Let's tie a piece of string around it to make sure I know which one it is. And I'm leaving it very loose so that uh, it won't constrict the growth of the stem. And that's pretty much it. I'll, uh, then I just wait for the fruit to to mature and we'll harvest the seeds from that and I'll probably do a quick update video later on when that happens and show you. Um, and that's all there is to it. This works with any squash. You would have to do the same thing. Please uh, hit like, subscribe, thank you, come back. I'll, I'll keep making more videos like this in the future.